This episode of Rivals is presented by Zambrero. Feel good mix. And then I'm gonna say... On the last episode of Rivals, we met the cast. Eight of Australia's best up and coming surfers, all of whom were given two months to pick a swill at their local break and three hours to rip the place to pieces. This episode on Rivals, we head west to link up with Jacob Chippo Wilcox, a man who has already surfed in multiple championship tour events and loves nothing more than shoving his long frame into orbs of mortal conaquence. My name's Jacob Wilcox, I'm 24 years old and I'm from Margaret River, Western Australia. They say West is best and Jacob Chippo Wilcox is surely one of the best in the West when it comes to packing cones of mortal conaquence. The latest in a long line of cool lord, cute pig, mad men from across the Nullarbor, he's a force of nature in hollow waves and one of the best barrel riders on the planet. Front side or backside, this gluttonous tube pig has packed his pineal gland with so much vige, you can barely get a liquor sense out of him these days. Let's see what tales from the tubular crypt he's got for us today. After seeing that clip he dropped through COVID, I was like, whoa, everyone was kind of like relaxed and couldn't do much, and he drops this banger of a clip. I was like, whoa, it's kind of scary. I was like, whoa, that's the bar, that's the level now, that's hectic. The way he attacks those waves is second to none, like some of the best slab surfing and big raw ocean surfing is really good and he just reads like a T, it's in his element for sure. No, I'd say he's probably one of the best power riders in the world, like some of the stuff he does up at those waves up northwest and especially like he matches it with all the regular footers at a lot of those rights and he's goofy so yeah it's crazy to see how talented he is in those type of waves. The video parts that he's produced over the last five years, they've been deadly. Like, he's proper gnarly, charges crazy big slab barrels. He's super gnarly in the air and on rail and pulls into huge barrels. Like, he's one of my favourite surfers, for sure. Being a fellow goofy footer. Wouldn't even mind if I saw him on the tour or just free surf and, like, the way he surfs in some of them ways with consequence and stuff like that, he could just do clips for the rest of his life. and make millions off it. What he can go and chase with, you know, reading a few maps and getting his four-wheel drive and punching up the coast is, uh, like, it's hard to even talk about because I remember, I'm just thinking about watching it now. I'm like, he got some quite incredible waves in those years. So, yeah, he's, he's really lucky to have grown up and been able to tap into those surf breaks. Obviously, a lot of the contests, he's been coming over the East Coast and so it's going to be sick for him to kind of have a contest um, kind of style thing for him back at home and um, waves are just unreal over there so it's going to be sick. I think he'd be rubbing his hands together and um, he's got quite an abundance of reef breaks he could surf so if one's not good it's probably a short drive to another one that's probably just as pumping. In that three hour heat I reckon uh, I like to get proud. Um, it's probably my favourite feeling in surfing and I feel like anyone that surfs likes to get proud so um, I reckon I'll be trying to find a good day to line up, get some barrels, get some turns, and um, yeah, but the main focus is get barreled. He might be renowned as one of the most fearless and technical tube riders in the world, but the genesis of Chippo's surfing journey was far more banal. Just another kid on an oversized hand-me-down, surfing knee-high runners under the watchful gaze of his old man. Surfing kind of started for me at home. Um, Dad kind of got me on this big styrofoam kind of foamy that all the clubbies kind of use. I remember that was my kind of my first board that I'd just go and muck around on myself and then Dad gave me one of his, um, a 6.6, um, Nick Pope board it was, one of his old boards and I rode that until I was about 12 years old, I think. Yeah, I rode that and it's just a super long board. Nowadays you see kids riding like a little 5.0 when they're 11. I was complete opposite. I had this big 6.6 that I had to like, I paddled around on, I was out of the water and I had to learn how to turn this big board. So yeah, they're kind of the crafts I started off on and yeah, it turned out to be pretty good. We were super lucky in WA that you can go up north in the winter because the winters down at Margaret River are 
pretty horrible. They rain a lot. Big storms that come across from South Africa and yeah, they, you can't surf for like a week at a time sometimes unless you're really keen. But I was lucky when I was a kid, we'd go up there for, probably for a couple of months every year. And when I think I was about nine years old, we stayed up there for about six months and it was not a bad way to um, spend year six. I remember I had to I had to do my homework before I went surfing every day, but um, I was like, where I'd sit and do my homework, I'd look out to the perfect left running down the reef and it was a good place. Dad didn't want me to get sponsored super early. He's like, nah, mate, like, you don't need to get sponsored just for the sake of having a sticker on your board. Like, that's, you can surf already. Like, the sticker's not gonna make you surf any better. Like, you can, you can get sponsored when you're a bit older. Like, the kids are getting sponsored when like 10 years old, 11 years old. And, Dad was kind of like, no, nah, it's all right. You, if you keep doing well and you're doing good, then you'll get a good sponsorship when you get a little bit older. So um, when I was 13 or 14, I got sponsored by Rip Curl, and then I've been sponsored by them for over 10 years now. And they've been amazing for supporting my dreams and letting a young kid that started off on a little styrofoam foamy to now traveling the world, serving and going to these amazing places, like fulfill his dream, which is um, something that I'm very grateful for. While it's his tube riding that's garnered global attention, Chippo is no slouch when it comes to turns, punts and competitive nous. Following a glittering junior career in which he won an ISA World Junior title, he famously fought his way through the trials of the Rip Curl Pro Portugal as a 16-year-old and into the main event where he knocked out none other than 11-time world champion Kelly Slater. He backed that up with a runner-up at the Rip Curl Cup Padang and now finds himself on the Challenger Series, jostling for a position on the World Tour. All the Bali boys are pretty wild, so yeah, it's wicked to be out there on stage with them. They're all loving it and uh, it was even better to be out in the water with them when it, got, when it was getting really close, all nagging each other. So yeah, it was great to be out there and great to see it. Wow, I was on heater back then. It made me pride. <laughs> Ever since I was growing up, he was always winning the junior events and the grommet events and was kind of the stick it up kid. And um, we didn't see him too much on the East Coast because he was over in the West. But um, when he would come over, he'd kind of smoke all of us. We used to have the gnarliest grom comps together. And I remember going over to WA for a grom search. We both made the final together and it was so gnarly. Like we would have been like, like 15, 16, like super young, we were just like, battling like it was like full on. I remember Jacob coming on to the scene like he was a year or two younger than us and he was like when he come on he was just gnarly like he knows how to compete but he also has like a level of surfing there that when it goes into that gear it's like you're not catching him. After the break we learn about Jacob's move to the east coast. Let's face it, nobody wants to get skunked. Don't go before you know. Know before you go. With Surfline, get live surf cams, long range forecasts, and so much more. Surfline, we'll help you find your next wave. Growing up in WA was amazing. I, I, there's so much room, like you can go surfing, you can just like do so many amazing things associated with the ocean. Um, so I guess I come over here to the Gold Coast and everything's like a bit of a shock and there's so many cars, there's so many people, there's always so many people on the surf. So I guess that kind of makes me even more grateful for where I got to grow up and the freedom I had as a kid. And um, I like having the room, I like having the connection with the ocean and all that sort of stuff. And I feel like that definitely got growing from being able to grow up in WA, I guess. Leaving the long period swells, stiff offshores and uniquely hollow waves of the West Coast can't be easy, and truth be told, it's crueled more than a few promising competitive careers. To make a fist of it on the world tour, Chippo has followed a tried and tested path that's led him to the heart of the high intensity, high performance Australian surfing mecca of the Gold Coast. Yeah, it's going good. It's been, I've been over here for probably, I don't know, almost five months now. It's been really good for my surfing, I think. Just been training, surfing a lot, and it's just like so competitive. You come over here, surfing by all these good surfers all the time, and it's like a good environment to make yourself a lot better at surfing, which who doesn't want that? The main things that kind of made me want to move over here is like 
Mugger River's really nice. It's just a bit sleepy and it's hard to kind of grow and better yourself and get out of your comfort zone when you're just in a place that you're so comfortable. So get out of my comfort zone, and come over here and just try it out again and see how I go and see if it makes my surfing better. I feel like it has and I've really been enjoying it. The way it's been fun. It's so good over here just for my, uh, my headspace and my competitive mindset because I just feel like I'm in that mindset all the time, always improving it, always growing in that area. I post at home, sometimes I would just be like, switch on when I go to a comp, but then I would come home and it would just be, the waves would be really good. Just be easy to switch back into kind of free surfer mode. So at least now I'm just on the program every week over here. It's good. There is no denying Chippo's talent, but putting it all together in the pressure cooker of competitive surfing is a task that has crumpled the best of them. After falling agonizingly short in his World Tour qualification quest last season, he has joined the Elite Surfing Academy at Australia's High Performance Centre alongside former World Tour surfers Morgan Siblick and Liam O'Brien, which he hopes will get him over the final hurdle. I remember a few of our little tussles and stuff we've had. I beat him in a final in the last 10 seconds down to Voca last year, and I just remember him here, and like as I come out and I read the score, it just went <laughs> Here's me, like, elated, and he's, it's like the total contrast of emotions, like, but that's what competitive surfing does, and you can just tell that fire is always down at the event ready, on good boards, and you can see who's putting in the effort before the event, getting their work in, and he's definitely one of them. Yeah, the first, few years on the QS were hard, like just a reality start from getting those CT experiences and having some good heats in the CTs and then I think like, oh yeah, sweet, I'm going to get on the QS and just roll straight through it, straight onto the CT. And yeah, it just doesn't work like that. He was probably the first one to kind of start to get the wild cards into the CT and uh, kind of got us all thinking and stuff. So um, yeah, I think he could take some big scalps on the tour. and. Uh, he, he's got everything, he's got the turns, the barrels and the airs, so yeah, he's, he's going to be good if he makes it. Yeah, he's probably had eight wild cards in the Margies now, made a bunch of heats. Uh, he'd, he'd go off, he's, he's a really good, good wave surfer and you need to have that aspect on tour. And he, and he grinds out small waves too, so he's got both the levels where I think he'll be able to kill it and grind, grind through the, the hard ones and capitalise on the really good ones. If it's not this year, it's going to be the next, it's inevitable for Jacob for sure. It hurts when you come so close like that where you need to make one heat to fulfill your dream and everything that you've worked towards for the whole year. Like, yeah, that definitely hurts. But at the same time, it's like, all right, how I looked at it was, I was so close to making it and I didn't feel like I'm the best version of myself to make it yet. So I've got another year to make myself better. So when I do get there, I'm even better and can stay there for longer. A bad day competitive surfing is like better than a lot of people's days in life, so. I was super lucky to do it and I think if you just keep knocking on the door, keep showing up with the right processes and competing strong, then eventually it will happen. After the break, Chippo sets his sights on a return to the West for his rival's heat. When it comes to world-class waves, Western Australia is peerless, particularly when you're talking about big skits pits. Chippo has a smorgasbord of smoking cones to choose from. Which will he go for? I think Jacob being able to um, grow up, learn to surf, continue to surf and do his rivals heat in West Oz, I think that's a big advantage. I do have a big variety of waves in WA. I think that's kind of a good thing, but at times it can also be confusing because I can remember countless times from driving from one end of the Cape to the other, not surfing. And the waves might be pumping, but everywhere you go, like just isn't enough. And it goes back to that old thing. You should have just went out to the place that you checked first. Yeah, Chipper and good waves go hand in hand from his hometown. So it's going to be interesting to see what wave he picks. He surfs all those waves really good. Uh, I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know where he wants to go. I'm going to, I'm going to say Gas or North Point two crazy good waves. He's gonna do some really good surfing and he could potentially get some really big barrels. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to get the win. It would be kind of like a new age win in a way because you're versing people that are on the complete other side of the country. So I think it's gonna be exciting to watch everyone's episodes come out and see how you compare against everyone.
with the all-important opening Challenger Series event of the year just a couple of weeks out, Chippo has spotted a swell on the other side of the continent and he's considering pulling the trigger on his rival's heat. Gone home on Friday, thinking maybe you could get a run Monday, so wait and see. The swell's around that, that, period, around that range, two metres, and swell period looks good, winds look good, so hopefully get home, get straight into it. A compact polar low tracking through Western Australia's long range swell window sets up a solid pulse of long period south southwest ground swell for the Margaret River region, leading to a couple of classic autumn days as the building high pressure ridge extends light offshore easterly winds across the coast, setting in right in time for the swell's arrival. This is the, um, the sled shed. Here on my right I have the 511, just in case it is a bit smaller, if it's a bit more barrels or kind of bigger could be on the 6-1, so have them both in the car, but still I reckon I'll be right in the sweet spot. The sweet spot's kind of the go-to. Conditions are looking good, just needs to, I just needs to clean up a bit more. It's a bit kind of junky and all over the show, so cleans up a little bit by tomorrow morning, I think we'll be on. And yeah, got good boards, so happy days. You. <laughs> From where I live, that's within about like a three minute drive, there's a bunch of waves, so um, we're going to go look at the number one option first, which is um, gas. And there's also a box as well, we could have a look at that. Um, that's always a good option, but it's just a little bit more fickle than gas. It just needs a bit more kind of lined up, perfect conditions, which I don't think we'll have um, tomorrow. This is where most of the waves are, within this like probably 20 kilometer stretch of coast. There's some pretty fun waves, so we're pretty lucky here. So if I can't find some good waves tomorrow, even though we're a bit stuck for time and the, low, like, the forecast looks okay, um, if I can't find some waves, then I'm having a shocker. While checking conditions for his rival's heat, Chippo receives a surprise phone call from World Surf League men's tour manager, Renato Hickel, informing him that he's been given the wild card for the upcoming championship tour event to be held at his home break of Margaret River main break. Yeah, sure am. What do you got for me? No way. You're kidding. Wow. I'm stoked. Oh, definitely. Except any day of the week. <laughs> Except 10 times over. Thanks a lot for that, Renato. Enjoy your time in WA. I'm sure I'll see you. Yeah, roughly. <laughs> Looks like we got out, mateys. <laughs> While this is great news, it's also a double-edged sword for Chippo, who will now be forced to juggle scoring waves for his rival's heat with preparing for the event alongside 50 of the best male and female surfers in the world. That'd be really hard, and I'm stoked I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> so. Um... Yeah, we'll see what he what he comes up with, and um, yeah, good luck to him. <laughs> it's a pretty consistent place. If, if you get stuck with a storm, it could be a bit hairy, but I'm sure his local knowledge in that area is going to find him a decent wave, where he's going he's going to be one of the top contenders for the winner. I'm not like a huge forecast like breakdowner, but as long as the swell's looking good, I'll check the swell boys in the morning, make sure the swell periods are right, and then hopefully I don't have a meltdown. Majority of the time I feel like I'm pretty on the money with it. And I got good people around me that would tell me, oh yeah, it's gonna be good here, it's gonna be good there. I think he probably will get an opportunity at some pretty cool waves. Yeah, it just depends on the weather patterns. Like West Oz can be so fickle. Fingers crossed, that time of year we can um, get it done. If not, I'll be over at Sewers there on the little beach break doing some airs or something. That'd be sad. <laughs> Hope that's not the case. After the break, it's game on for Chippo as his local slab turns on. It's fresh. <laughs> Looks pretty good though. Optimistic with my time frame. Today's an early day, we try to get it done, so. Hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to Rivals Season 3, and we are in for a treat today as we head over to the west and the great Jake 
Chippo Wilcox. He's going to be surfing a local slab not too far from his front door called Gas Bay. And let me tell you, it is one of the pure joys over there on the West Coast. Jed Smith, Vaughn Blakey in the booth. Smithy, you must be chomping at the bit for this one. Oh, mate, there's nothing I like more than watching the top dogs give it a full send at the Gas Bay. It's a technical, ultra-consequential orb. Uh, it tests the best of them out. It flexes the best of them. But there is no one better on this grand continent at stuff in their face than Jacob Chippo Wilcox. We've seen him do it at Toomey's, and we're about to see him do it today on his front doorstep. Look at it. Oh, oh the conditions are absolutely dreamy as Jacob paddles out and assumes the position at the top of the peak, the apex predator, and he's gone left. He's starting with a left, Smithy. The gas bay left, it does throw up uh, some pretty nice options. Oh, stick we had to give him a shovel to get himself out of there, Vaughn. Oh, that was beautifully done. This thing just bottoms out, and look at the read here. Oh, in early, and just watch this thing ledge and try and absolutely stuff out your life force, but not Chippo. Oh, he's wrestling foam balls on this one, mate. He may as well oh. join the WWF, because there's that much wrestling going on, Spivy. Jeez, you got to be good to surf these waves, Vaughn. They are... So technical, so consequential, and Chippo is just an absolute master of the art. A young samurai just putting his sword through some absolute orbs. Jacob Wilcox, a uh, seasoned campaigner on the CT, even though he's never oh actually... My oh, Lord. my goodness! Oh. There you go. Get oh. the read wrong. Even the low dogs do it, Vaughn. Oh, there's the ledge. Oh, my Lord. And it's just Yahtzee on the dome. That just pinched harder than a mean auntie, that one, didn't it? Oh, look how deep he's on this thing, Vaughn. Right behind the peak, and it just goes square. Square as a rectangle. And the Chippo knifing it. Getting spat out. Oh, holy oh, oh my goodness. Wow. Helicopter on the inside. And that is exactly how you want to finish this. Length of ride is going to be not a factor here today. It is just a short, oh. punchy one. But look at him slide in under the guillotine. Beautiful read. Look at that style, Smithy. Actually almost stalls on the front foot, which isn't done all that often. Gets the little weave in. And then this section just sits up, jackknifes, and Chippo throws the big hanger on the inside. Points galore here, my friend. Points galore. Now, this guy has had plenty of World Championship Tour experience without having qualified. He surfed something like eight heats in CT jerseys. And this is why, mate. Nice little karate style 1980s tube drive there. Yeah. As he comes flying out of that thing. But yeah, just a classical takeoff. I mean, it's a cakewalk. He's turned these ultra technical, unpredictable slabs into what Jerry Lopez did at the pipeline, Vaughn. Makes it look all too easy. And he's got that same sort of wiry, long, loose frame as Jerry Lopez, as Owen Wright. I see a lot of that in his surfing. He's able to just generate plenty of time on the rail just by being able to talk his body out and get that extra length moving through the water. He is one of the real stars of the future and we really want to see him qualify, but what we'd really love to see him do is take out Rival Series 3. All our surfers, they will be surfing for three hours. They've got two months to pick their window, a three hour session, and it's whoever can lock away the best session is gonna take out Rival Season 3. Wilcox is having a blinder and he's even taken a few that he probably knows he isn't going to make. Wow, I mean, how's the chip shot into that thing? But he's racing, he's pumping as the wave ledges and goes bone dry. I mean, the gumption, look at this thing, just wedges and ledges and he's just fanging light speed, squeaks on the entry. Double rainbow again, Vaughn. He's in the Gaia Nexus. He's in the spirit molecule. He's fully feeling it. Oh, oh this is just... Oh, how was that thing? Dragon breath all over his back. He just knifes it in the perfect spot. And, oh, that was the wave of the heat so far. That was a special. So technical. Extends through the trough and just puffed out. And he's got another one here. Jacob Wilcox, too deep, surely. Surely too deep. No, he cannot oh. make that one. Have a look at how square and thick and powerful that section is. That is such gnarly ocean there. That is the Indian Ocean, just full of pure rage. And geez, he's had to pay to play today, Chippo. I mean, uh, geez, I hope he has a couple of fish oils tonight to wash this down. The bottom here at Gas Bay, it's, it's hard, mate. 
It's rocks. And uh, you hit the bottom out here, you'll know all about it as we see a late takeoff. Oh. Free fall and lift. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You will never live to see that again. Get a spoon, scoop out your eyeballs, chuck them in the bin. You've seen it all. That was unbelievable. To have the gumption to fade on the takeoff like he's done there. And uh, he's just fully airdrop. There's the ledge. There's Jacob. Give him a parachute. He's going off the Richter. Look at this, Smithy. This is one of the most critical rides I have ever seen. Don't worry about the rival's heats. This oh. is up there with one of the most unbelievable things you will ever see in your life. The chandelier, there is no vision. He's inside there riding the foam ball and out he comes. This is going to be close to a perfect ride. This will be one of the real highlights of Rivals Season 3. Let's see his reaction. He must know it's good and he does know it's good. There's the finger in the air, number one. Show me the money. Come on, boys. This is a landmark performance from Chibo Wilcox. Well, this has just turned into a glory session for Jacob Wilcox as he comes off the bottom. What's he going to do here, Smithy? Probably go back to turns. He hasn't done one for a fair while since we saw that massive air. And look at that, a lacerating off the top. Re-entry par excellence. Look at this thing, the timing, the spray, the rooster tail. It had it all. And I can tell you, mate, that's the kind of surfing that I'll be thinking about when I go to bed tonight. It's just been a, an amazing session here for Jacob Wilcox. You'd have to say he's put a flag in the ground. Gauntlet thrown, gloves off. Rival season three, he wants a piece of it. Chippo, you've done yourself proud. You've done your community proud. You've done your nation proud. You've done the Waxheads proud. Let's uh, throw it down to Chippo for a little bit of a reveal of how he thinks his rival heat has gone down. Bang, two hours, 15 minutes. No, I'm joking, that's about, no, sorry, three hours. Tick. It was good to pull the trigger. I feel like I've only kind of had this week at home to kind of pull the trigger, or should I say like four days, because I've been over on the East Coast competing. I guess you could kind of say I've lucked out a little bit. Maybe I've strategically timed it and it's all kind of worked out after years of surfing here and putting in time out there. It just kind of worked out for me and um, my highlight of the session would probably have been, um, I had one where I did like a pretty late drop and got a pretty nice barrel. I was happy with that one. I enjoyed the one. I kind of comboed up, got a barrel, did it air. Usually when I try that combo, I slip off. So maybe because that was a bit more on the line, I um, stuck it out and stayed on my feet. When the waves are like that and you know where you're surfing and it was super fun and there's only a handful of people out, like it's hard to put too much, that much pressure on yourself. You've got to remind yourself where you are and what you're doing and that usually takes the pressure off pretty quickly. Didn't even feel like a heat compartment at all. Like I had my friends out there, friends on the beach. It just felt like another day in WA. Well, there you have it, a mind-melting performance from Jacob Chippo Wilcox in the West. He waited, he bided his time, he picked up gem of a day at his local spot. And Smithy, he's left us with some of the real highlights of Rifle Season 3. I mean, a warping, warbly slab of Indian Ocean, and Chippo has just shown all the dexterity and technique for which he has become world famous. One of the best tube riders on the planet, one of the best tube riders in the West, and that's no feat in itself, Vaughn. That's, uh, you know, there is tube pigs and core lords galore over there, but he has had an absolute blinder. I mean, that's what we expected from Rival Street. We wanted to see the best young surfers in the world push to their limits, and Chippo has delivered. He's delivered many a cone. He stuck a flag in the ground, and on that flag it says, come at me, come at me boys, but there's plenty more to come in Rivals Season 3. Next week on Rivals, Sunny Coast Punch Shaman, Reef Hazelwood. This episode of Rivals is presented by Zambrero. Feel good mix.